So we heard this term used a few times in the presentations today, and just to set a baseline, I was hoping you could maybe just explain to us what is boundless XR and what kind of experiences do you associate with that? Yeah, that's a great question. So boundless XR really allows you to experience mobile XR anywhere, wherever you want to. It uses split rendering, which distributes the computation between the device and then, and then supplements it with whatever is going on in the cloud, whether, whether it's like graphics, you know, hi highly computationally intensive graphics rendering and visuals. All that is delivered over 5G, high bandwidth, low latency uh, link. And that makes for a truly immersive uh, XR experience wherever you are. So when we think about making immersive mobile XR widely available, what are some of the primary impediments to that? Yeah, and you know, we are already, uh, our, our boundless XR solution is already on trial right now. We're already trialing with British Telecom and EE. We're talking to many OEMs to bring this to market. Uh, and you know, there's always going to be, you know, power consumption. I think every successive generation will have to, you know, you know continue to get down on power and continue to, to basically, uh, you know, improve the display and optics, right? So these are the three main sort of, as we look into the future, especially as we look into AR, uh, these are the three things that's going to be very important. So you mentioned some of the operators you're working with and, and 5G. So when we think of 5G and XR, what are some of the features of the air interface standard that lend itself to supporting the XR technology? Yeah, you know, 5G, unlike 4G, 5G is built ground up even from release 15 to support low latency use cases. You know, it, it, like it has wider bandwidth and many low latency enabling features. Um, and really, so, so that allows us, to, for, like for example, to, to support an end-to-end -end 5G latencies uh, of like less than 20 milliseconds, which is very essential for a, a split XR you know, type experience. And it also has plenty of bandwidth. Uh, like in our system, we're able to support, even in a single 100 megahertz of bandwidth, we can easily support six XR users simultaneously, each at about 50 megabits per second on the average. And that can be easily scaled the more G node Bs you deploy and with wider bandwidths and also with some of the more emerging um, you know, 5G features that are on the horizon. Yeah, in terms of these future features, I think some of the in-market commercial devices today are largely based on release 15, but if we've, as we've seen the standard continue to evolve, what kind of performance improvements have come along with that? Um, so even with release 15, we're able to get boundless XR off the ground that we already showed you in our, like in our test bed. Um, the future releases will essentially uh, uh, add more sort of features that would al allow you to increase your system capacity um, and also enable some of the additional low latency features which are in release 16 and 17 that will further improve the system performance. And I think today we saw a gaming use case as well as an enterprise collaboration use case, but when you think long term about Boundless XR, where do you really think the value is going to be created from this exciting technology? Yeah, you know, the, the possibilities are endless and especially as we go from the VR, which is virtual reality, into augmented reality and it gets deployed in a wide area public network instead of a private network. So in the public network, you'll have sleek, uh, you know, consumer wearable AR glasses. You, you'll have augmented information on, like, on top of it, and whether it's like shopping, virtual office, or even, uh, for example, augmented reality-based like repair work, uh, like in factories and manufacturing, right? So the possibilities are endless, and we're really at the infancy of it. And to see all that happen, I think, you know, continued improvements in display optics, as well as, you know, like power consumption, right? We need to have these devices working at the minimum eight to 10 hours without, you know, battery recharge. And especially as we get to the very sleek form factor consumer AR devices, um, you know, the, well, power consumption and thermals become very, very critical. Well, I know you said the technology is in its infancy, but it seems like it's developing really quickly, and it's exciting to see all the progress that you're making with your team here at Qualcomm, and I do appreciate you taking the time to speak with me today. Well, thanks a lot for these questions, and if you want to learn more, definitely check out our videos. Thank you.